Since it first started tumbling into Ireland through the old pirate coves of West Cork and in the stomachs of drug mules coming from Miami, cocaine has become the drug of our nation. It has swept in like a blizzard, dusting every corner of every small town. And so swift and total has its spread been that the Irish are now some of the biggest users in the world. But to unravel how a small island like ours on the edge of Europe ended up such a big player in the major cocaine leagues, we must follow the white supply lines back to the beginning. We must follow the routes it has taken as it travels across the globe. And most importantly, we need to follow the cowboys who put us on the map. So join me, Nicola Talent, for my new live show, Cocaine Cowboys, the story of Ireland's love affair with Colombia's biggest export. Limited tickets now available for February 10th at the Lime Tree Theatre in Limerick, February 15th in Cork's Everyman and at Dublin's Three Olympia on Sunday, February 18th. Tickets available at venues are on mcd.ie. When you're finished giggling there Sorry. about something else that you're not allowed to talk about. Um, so we're going to talk about Mr. Flashy and who he is. And we're going to start because there's been a huge amount of kind of uh, social media, certainly from members of the public, demanding his name, yep. wanting to know why we're not naming him. And I think maybe some people just don't totally understand exactly why we're doing that as a, you know, as a legitimate publisher, you know, while members of the public can go on social media and they can pretty much say what they want, we can't. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, there's there's two reasons why newspapers don't name somebody. The first one is because uh, the person were, were afraid of being sued, basically, um, that that person, uh, somebody maybe who has been convicted of murder, you could name that person as being a suspect in a killing because the reputation won't be damaged. But there's other people without any convictions at all. And if they're named, um, they they people will be open to bring bring action, to bring legal action. And the second reason, which is probably the more common reason when it comes to serious gangland criminals, as many people agree, and in the case of Mr. Flashy is, is that they're already before the courts and can be facing charges. Um, and if somebody is before the courts uh, and a newspaper names them, publishes their identity, publishes their picture, when they go, when that case comes to court, they can argue, I couldn't get a fair trial mm-hmm. because everybody has seen me in the Sunday world, you know. And and, and uh, in that case, the real name is before the courts, the, the, the individual's real name. real name, nothing to do with the uh, sort of, I suppose, the nickname that we give them. Yeah. And that's so as we can because they are significant. Anybody who has a nickname who we do talk about is a significant figure in the underworld. There's a reason for us talking about them, but we're just in a position that they may be before the courts for different matters. And if we were to link the two to name the real Mr. Flashy as such by his real name, we could find ourselves in contempt of court. 100%. And contempt is a very serious matter. It's not a, it's not a, it it can be a a matter where newspaper editors could in theory end up in prison and everything. You and I could end up and I don't really fancy the docas for a few weeks. No, we would get some good stories. We certainly would, (laughs) but that's it. And actually I should say, I suppose members of the public on social media don't actually have carte blanche to say what they want either. they absolutely don't. But it's up to them what they want to put out there. And obviously, you know, a court or Gardaí could come to their door if, if there's... Well, a hundred percent. I mean, that people can be in contempt, and you saw it um, in in relation to some of the people who named the suspect in in or the the actual killer in the Anna Creasel case. A mm. number of people came before the courts and were fully prosecuted. So it 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 is somebody can be in contempt of court as an individual on social media. However, it's obviously much easier to pursue a media organisation than course. it is to yeah. track somebody down on social media. But I mean, a lot of the people. A lot of the criminals, some of them get named during their lifetime. Um, if they have enough convictions or they're not facing charges, um, other people maybe like uh, I think Eamon Don was Eamon Don mm. was only known as the Don during his his lifetime. He was never particularly named, as far as I remember. And, and other guys, um, the Sunday World obviously broke the mold. I think in naming uh, Martin Cahill as the general. Uh, he it took a long time to do that, though. You know, it's not an easy process. And I suppose usually in a particular, the Sunday world will do it when the time is right and when, 
you know, the legal advice is that, you yeah. know, you're maybe taking a bit of a risk, but, you know, go for it. Because sometimes you do have to take a bit of a risk. But for the moment, we're not going to do that with Mr. Flashy. But we are going to give details about his background, where he came from, and just describe to listeners, you know, why he's so significant. Well, Mr. Flashy... Uh I suppose um, he's currently uh, being investigated in relation to two firearms that were seized in Finglas um, two years ago, actually, which is unusual in, in one sense that a, an investigation, um, like often when these guns are seized, if somebody's caught red-handed, they're taken in and charged very quickly. But obviously this investigation seems to be coming to a head a couple of years on. Um, Mr. Flashy is still only 30 years old, um, so he's still... A, a young man in gangland terms. Um, so I was actually looking back on the first appearance of Mr. Flashy uh, under that nickname. Yeah. What what year would you say it was? Okay, so he's 30. So it has to be uh, sort of uh, 2012? No, 2017 was actually his right. first mention. So that's, so that's seven years, basically. Yeah. Um, so he's been in the papers since he was 23 years old. It really tripped me up there. Well, I could have, that's not you know, good mathematics. I was mathematics. through my head and yeah. I didn't thankfully come out of my mouth. 19 <laughs> <laughs> Well, so he was 23 years old and at that point he was significant enough to be named as as a gang boss, which is really unusual um, if you consider most of the people that achieve seniority in, in gangland terms that all nearly always in their 30s. And he sort of got to that point. The first stories were in the Evening Herald, written by Ken Foy, uh, who's been on the podcast obviously m- many times. And sort of his first story was referring to this guy, Mr. Flashy, who was 23, I think, at the time. And he was earning, it was described as earning something like 25,000 uh, euros a week from drug dealing. And it was descriptions of kind of how that business was occurring. Mm. And what it mainly was, was sort of the open drug dealing that you see on, on the streets of any city really in Ireland or any, probably most countries in the world. And he was directing that operation in the Finglas area. And you had people in certain parts of North Dublin selling on the streets using uh, scooters at the time, uh, you know, scrambler bikes, moving, you know, small stashes and that kind of street dealing. And that's, he became the king of that really, I suppose, Mm. at the age of 23, was making a huge amount of money and earned the nickname Mr. Flashy, thanks to our colleague Emer Rabbit, because he was going around in, you know, fancy, fancy designer gear. Yeah. And he liked to sort of uh, put himself up and out there on social media, you know, showing off his 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 wares. His wares, shall we say? Twenty seventeen. Before we move on from that, of course, was a very volatile time in this city. Um, you know, height of the Kinnahan Hutch feud had started in February twenty sixteen. There was a huge amount of movement in that year previous because there was a lot of murder. There was a you know, the feud was sucking a lot of resources from the Gardaí, but it was also sucking a lot of resources from the Kinahan cartel and the that old world order that was there in place for the 10 years previous. Um, a lot of people were leaving the country. A lot of people were getting arrested. And there was a lot of career opportunities, shall we say, for younger people to kind of move up the ranks very, very quickly. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you were to compare it with Premier League managers, you know, you have an older guy who was in place in Finglas, Trevor Byrne. Um, Trevor Byrne's currently serving a series of lengthy, lengthy sentences for organised crime, including weapons charges. But he he had a, a headquarters in Finglas and he had become very trusted by Daniel Kinahan, actually. I don't know if they had a long association. I mean, Trevor Byrne had a reputation as being a headbanger, I suppose, a very dangerous, violent mm. person. Um, he probably hadn't grown up with the Kinahan cartel. But we had talk in the in you know as the feud was breaking out or just before that that Daniel Kinnan had met him personally on a number of occasions and Trevor Byrne had been in place in Finglas he was in his 30s at the time he was that kind of senior criminal who'd been in prison a good couple of times and had that reputation and he had a headquarters and he had a number of young guys working for him basically um Following the murder of Eddie Hutch uh, in just just after the Regency, uh, Trevor Byrne had been become under Guardian wanted to speak to him basically mm. about that that murder, and he had ultimately left the country. 
um, and ended up in the UK actually. He subsequently came back from the UK. But after he left, there was that kind of vacuum. And not only was there a bit of a vacuum, but there was also a drugs boom going on in the middle of the feud, which we don't, we kind of don't maybe focus on that. But Mr. Flashy stepped up. He learned the ropes there through Trevor Byrne. He was operating out of this headquarters. Um, he'd had that association with another criminal who was very closely linked to Ross Browning. Um, you could see that even in social media posts that Mr. Flashy was appearing with these associates of Ross Browning. Ross Browning was one of the only senior Kinahan cartel guys who stayed most of the time in, in Dublin and had become you know, as it was described in court branding and become the cartel's number one man mm. in Ireland. And overseeing all these smaller sort of yeah. operations that were in place. Or, or in even maybe not overseeing, but mm. certainly supplying them. Mm-hmm. But maybe at the, after a certain point, maybe not directing them in the way that that the, the, the kind of had been a bit more directing, I think, at some point. But he was certainly wholesaling drugs to them. And we heard that in, in, in cab cases. Um, so and of course, there was money needed for to fund that feud. Yeah. While the Kinnahans obviously have billions, uh, they still really needed to pull in the money here on the ground in Ireland and in England and wherever else. And there was a lot of kind of, uh, you know, stories about heavy handed debt collecting from everywhere. So the likes of Mr. Flashy, who was the, had the confidence really to lead yeah. that sort of faction in the Finglas area was somebody very important to them. Absolutely important to them. And then if you look as the few progressed, um, you had an attempted hit on on Patsy Hutch, which a number of, of men ultimately went to, to prison for, including a number of Finglas men uh, like uh, Gary Thompson. Mm. Um, these people were from Finglas, weren't like in that kind of inner circle. So those connections between the Kinnan cartel and these kind of criminals who are operating on a pretty much freelance basis and also one of Mr. Flashy's closest associates, um, a, a, an associate of his was caught up in that whole plot as well. It, those, they also can't be named for legal reasons. So those connections were important to the Kinnan cartel in all sorts of ways. So Mr. Flashy and not just him, but you can see back in pictures um, and you shall be one this week, yeah. actually, a uh, social media picture um, of about eight or ten guys. Um, a load of them can't be named again. Yeah. But you have other people that have now, with Mr. Flashy, like like Brandon Ledwich, who was shot um, shot dead last year. Um, you have other people like James, James Whelan, Whelan yeah. who shot, who's believed to have been shot dead by the Flashy gang. Um, these are all in this. We also have one of the key players in in some of the uh, the 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 feud in Blanchardstown going on as well. So these are all friends and also in that mix will be people like Sean Little, who's also been murdered. Um, people like Caelan Smith, who's also behind bars for a, a, a Kinahan cartel hit attempt serving a, another lengthy sentence. So these are all these young guys mm. growing up and instead where there might have been a time where there was the money was spread around. It was all going directly into their pockets, and once they had that bit of autonomy, um, a certain like while a lot of things are quiet around gangland in other ways, in that parts of North Dublin and associated areas started becoming the most, uh, you know, there's loads of these feuds, really, mm. really complicated feuds. Like they're young and they're inexperienced, and yet they're given positions of power, probably way above them yeah. and, and their abilities. And you you do see that when they're young. There's so many falling outs. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of jealousies, there's accusations about, you know, money going missing, drugs going, whatever. And especially when they're under pressure as well from the Gardaí. Those photographs are always interesting to look yeah. back on because you see how friendships break up and how, you know, friends turn on one another. In the normal world, you probably just don't speak for a few years yeah. until you grow yeah. up a bit. In their world, people get killed. Yeah. And I mean, if you look at the first time, like obviously there was that article, but then later in 2017, there's these constant stream of articles about Mr. Flashy and mm-hmm. his gang. And it's because they get involved in this very serious uh, row with these older criminals in Finglas who are in their 30s. Um, some of these older guys would have been associates of Greg Lynch back in the day. There was one of one very serious guy, I won't name him on this occasion, but he had convictions for armed robbery, you know, really quite heavy criminals. Mm. So these guys are all in their 30s. Many of them 
you know, spent lengthy times in prison and they get in at sort of rows in pubs with this, with the flashy gang and the flashy gang take them on full on, mm. full steam ahead in their early twenties. And there's a number of incidents, a number of shootings, pipe bombs. And really since then, Flashy and his associates have been involved in an, a, a stream of different feuds. Um, on that occasion, uh, you they've know, blazed a path really through yeah, the, 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 yeah. That, that area. And, you know, the confidence of them, because I suppose they believed that they had the backing of the Kinahan cartel, which still was a huge name. It still is. I mean, yeah. But, you know, it was before it really had disseminated properly in Ireland 2017. There was still a fear associated with that name and they were kind of muscling in and pushing their weight around. And to take on those older criminals yeah. takes a confidence that not many young groupings no, have. Absolutely not. And I mean, it was very, very serious at the time. There was um, a guy called Glenn O'Toole who was arrested with a handgun. They believed he was going to try and kill Mr. Flashy. He ultimately got charged, put in prison and he, he passed away in prison. He died in prison. So that never came to court. But there was sh shots fired constantly at houses pipe bombs, threats on social media, the usual stuff. Um, and a lot of this uh, violence in Finglas was centred around this headquarters mm -hmm. in an area in Finglas, um, which was basically a, 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 an old council house that had been, uh, back to Trevor Burns Day, had been taken over by this group of criminals. It had become heavily fortified, a lot of CCTV, um, they had a bar in there, they met in there. They did. They, they kind of organised what they were going to do in there. And the police would go in and raid it, but then it'd be back up and running and yeah. very quickly afterwards. Um, it was, there was fire, shots fired at a number of times. It was firebombed ultimately. But that was a real centre of activity for, for that gang. Um, and then probably what happened was the flashy, the, the Kulak feud mm. broke out um, with the Gucci gang. And, it was these, there was a lot of, uh, there was a number of murders. Obviously, Sean, Sean Little was murdered. Um, Zach Parker was murdered. And Hamid... Uh, ha Hamid Sanambar. Sanambar was murdered. Was murdered. He was murdered. Uh, he was seen as having double cross, Sean Little. Yes. Um, he was a driver who was working for Sean Little, who had been rumoured, if yeah. you remember around the time, he was a really peculiar character. He was rumoured as being... Uh, an assassin sent yeah. to Ireland by Daniel Kinahan to finish off his his work here. Um, and he was nothing of the sort. He was a bit of a, a sort of a spoofer who'd yeah, spoofed yeah. his yeah. way into the gang, was working as a driver for Sean Little and he went to pay his respects to Sean Little and was shot dead in the driveway of that home. His body videoed and put up on social media. Yeah. So, I mean, there was a lot of... Mr. Flashy was... If not, I remember the funeral of Zach Parker. Yeah. He was murdered in January, I think, of 2019. He was a barber. He wasn't really very well known. He did a very small drug uh, conviction for like maybe three grand's worth of yeah. coke or cannabis or something he'd been caught with. And like when he was killed, nobody really knew who he was or what, yeah. you know. But yet he'd all the trappings. He was, body was covered in sort of this expense of inkings. He had a BMW car that he was murdered in. Um, 25 grand in the bank. And when you looked back, he'd been spending a lot of time holidaying in Dubai and various other places. But um, that funeral, which was sort of organised really by Sean Little, who was sort of his best friend. Yeah. We had the, the, the fallout from the David Byrne funeral when the Kinahan sort of foot soldiers were ordered to show up in the same outfits. Yeah, kind of a, a suit. And, and a suit with a blue tie, an yeah. tie or something, and a blue shirt. And what you had was, I think, that outfit, Zach Parker, Sean Little, trying to sort of connect Make themselves yeah. completely to the cartel at that stage. And a handful of them showed up in yeah. th that uniform, but then a lot didn't. Yeah. And there was a lot of social media activity, I thought at the time, by Mr. Flashy, sort of almost... They don't think they had some of his people attended the funeral. They were sort of uh, well. Look, there was a lot of paranoia about who, who you know, who, who was in with who and, and who ordered what, who ordered the shooting. And there was obviously a drug debt. I think was at the core of it. And also, who ordered who to wear these? Yeah, you know, these uniforms of were they Kinahan or were they not? I think from the point of view of Sean Little and his smaller mob, they were certainly trying to put themselves out there. Yeah, as being Kinahan. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, it was, it was, they, they obviously had their own ties 
to to the Burn Organised Crime Group. Um, they had other ties to gangland, even back back to the Hutch side. But they were, you know, they they it certainly what settled in was this sort of deep paranoia mm. um, amongst those those people who'd all become friends. And certainly, Mister Flashy himself became a focus of rumours of double crossing. Uh, a lot of you know, playing both sides, telling different people different things. Um, even past that then, as that, I mean, that feud really exploded and then mm. a good number of people ended up in prison, obviously, yeah. for, for various roles in that and it settled down. And then Mr. Flashy was again uh, tied into what what became known as the Corduff feud. Again, he was probably not central to it, but was always suspected of playing a role you know, uh, favouring certain sides, giving them access to weapons. Um, and How powerful is he or has he been? Like, because often people sort of say he's very much a kind of a media creation. creation and, you know, that he's really just a young lad, you know. Yeah, I think but there, I think there is a bit of... Two sides of that, I think. Yeah, I think there's a bit of, bit of truth in that, in that it become it became a kind of a way to describe somebody. He's an associate of Mr. Flashy. It's the, the Flashy gang and all of that. Where if you look in, in the court of feud, even somebody like Tristan Cherry, who's, who, who obviously was central to the, the Blanchardstown shooting and died as a result, you know, he's he would have been an associate of Mr. Flashy, mm. would have known him. But I don't think, you know, and maybe his broader... Uh, criminal associates may have been involved in 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 that Blanchard sound shooting, but whether Mr. Flashy is directing it or mm. not, that that seems to be oversimplistic. He was certainly pulling in. I mean, you're talking about twenty five thousand a week. Yeah, that buys you a lot of loyalty. That yeah. buys you a lot of power. Yeah. And we know that he certainly had drivers. You know, he always had sort of a crew around him, didn't yeah. he? A bit of security around him, that kind of thing. Again, a big show of power. However, um, in though, that world. When, get, when you get to the murder of James Whelan, which, which he is uh, directly implicated in, um, and that came after a series of, 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 of clashes. It, wasn't, it was the end point of a, a struggle between, I suppose, a Whelan faction and a flashy, flashy faction. Um, you know, James Whelan was, was shot dead in, in, in April, was it April 2022? Um, <clears throat> he would have been a, a, a long-time associate of Mr. Flashy, would have grown up together. Um, they would have fallen out. Um, James Whelan, also from Finglas, uh, was shot dead. Um, and, you know, it's believed that Flashy was directly involved in that in, in one shape or form. And that Whelan kind of challenged his power. Yeah, and, and probably <clears throat> quite successfully mm. in that, you know, uh, Mr. Flashy has spent most of his time in recent years out of Finglas for his own safety. He's not like... Uh, people in other areas where you see these gangland figures who are literally untouchable within their community. Uh, that hasn't been the case with Mr. Flashy. Um, he hasn't been safe even within his own community. He does have people around him, does have his own his own crew, but they're not uh, this all un, this untouchable gang. Like you'd see... A serious attempts on his life, wasn't there? Exactly. And you see people, uh, when James Whelan was buried, um, <clears throat> a very... So the famous funeral because it was it was videoed and there was this elaborate one hour video put up and you know a lot of scenes. But at that time, James Whelan would have had as much support in the in within the Finglas underworld as Mister Flashy, if not more. So <clears throat> he wasn't that all powerful figure. Mm. If you compare sort of some of the gangs in Limerick, say that that you know at their height. They would have controlled that area. Absolutely nobody would have dreamed of saying anything to them. He hasn't had that sort mm. of he hasn't had that sort of power. So, you know, in or around that 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 was a very tense time. If you remember, um James Whelan's mother was burnt out of her house. I mean, that mm. was a really shocking incident uh, in the aftermath of his funeral. Uh, you know, the house was firebombed, she's lucky to escape. You know, these things are really dangerous. Um, but shortly before that, um, there was a uh, firearm seized uh, as part of a raid on that flashy headquarters. Um, and that now, two years on, <clears throat> um, is could be a focus, a real legal threat to Mr. Flushing mm. because that has become, that guard investigation is reaching reaching a, a point at which they may hope to, to bring charges. And, um, and the significance of taking him <clears throat> off the streets and putting him, you know, a guy like him might not get bail. Yeah. So he'd be in custody. 
Yeah. And that contains at least him and maybe some other associates. And that gives everybody a bit of breathing space to try and focus on yeah. next to be focused on, if you know what I mean, as opposed to he is a troublemaker. He's a troublemaker. And also then there's the security around everybody because when he's when people like that are out in the streets, there's a threat to them as well, which is yeah. which is also can take up a huge amount of guard resources, resources. For sure, because they're floating around mm. in public and they're going in and, and out the of guards, their gyms and they're doing whatever they're doing. And the guards, by law, or I, I think it's by law anyway, but certainly by convention, have to keep him, Mr. Flashy, they'll have to tell him, we've got this intelligence threat yeah. against your life. So they have to protect them as well as investigate them. So it's a really unusual uh, kind of situation, but it takes a huge amount of resources to mm. protect even the criminals. Mm. And, um, it's it's a very time-consuming process. And there's been, so there, you know, if if there's a couple of people of that gang go behind bars, it'll, it'll really shut down. And you'll see them when he goes to prison, where his standing is, um, because when people that are associated with him have been in prison before, um, some of them we hear back have disassociated from mm. the flashy gang in order to be in with some of the Kinahan figures. Uh, they haven't necessarily been welcomed into the... Well, he'll be a youngster, won't he, as well? Like well, he goes into the prison system and it'll be up to elders to decide where he sits yeah. in the prison system because, of course, not everybody can mix with the Kinahan uh, crew? No, they won't. They, they have to they, be sanctioned nearly to be allowed? Well, kind of, yeah. I mean, the, the, the secure, the, it's it's maybe not like it, it, as simple as, as it would be with the, the IRA prisoners during the day, but the prison service will be told one way or another. Mm. This guy doesn't get protection if he goes in with these these heavy people. Um, so we, we'll see if it comes mm. to that. But And what sort of time has he spent in prison? He's, he spent uh, short periods for very short, yeah, yeah. short periods, um, nothing, nothing major. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's if you look at that that if you look at back at that picture that you showed me, that's a pity we can't print, but we will print it at one mm. stage, um, and other pictures as well. You can see so many of those guys. They're twenty two, twenty three. A good number of them are dead. Yeah. Um, a good number of them have survived shootings. Are um, now sworn enemies as well. It's yeah, funny. Sworn... Do you remember the photograph that uh, we had and we've used it, I think, of Gary Hutch, Daniel yeah. Kinahan. Yeah. Um, Maddie Martin, Doyle, there was Maddie another Doyle one. Yeah, yeah, Michael Martin. Gately. And they're all there together. Yeah. Having a drink. Yeah. Having a pizza, whatever they're yeah. doing. The good old times. And yeah. then everything just goes Falls to apart. shit like... And it felt really, really fell apart for these, these yeah. the Gucci gang and the Flashy gang. If you look back at them, you know, they're, they're, out of those 10 guys over a series of pictures, you know, there's a good handful dead, a handful in prison, mm -hmm. and there's a handful with an insecure future hanging over their heads, to say the least. You'd be far better off being in the pennies gang, <laughs> would you? <laughs> I don't know, probably, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, overambition is a, is a yeah, dangerous thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that belief in yourself, and I think that overconfidence, especially yeah. in that world, can always, you know, you nearly always can see them come a cropper with that. Yeah, I mean, it's... Belief in being untouchable. We speak about it a lot, how they'll eventually be taken down either by the law or by their enemies. Yeah, I mean, if you look as well, like, um, you know, you'd have to wonder if he, if the flashy gang, and this isn't the advice for, crimin for criminals, but if you don't get involved in these feuds, you know, which and most of these feuds are over relatively small amounts of money or personal matters or, you know, really don't amount to too much. Um, you know, you really have a lot more longevity. Um, it's these feuds that bring on the the, the guard attention, the media attention, and, you know, really stop them being able to, to do what they... I think the problem is if you're coming of age at 23 to become the leader of a gang, you probably haven't learned the skills of diplomacy. Yeah, or else letting some stuff And go. actually getting involved in that kind of world in the first place, there's not that many diplomats. No, or probably far, think, uh, you know, uh, people with long vision. Yeah. But if you look at, say, the family operation in in, in West Dublin, you know, they, they have really avoided mm -hmm. so much attention for so long because they haven't been uh, going out, you know, getting, get, shooting people over a over hundred quid, they you know. Bullying and using the vulnerable yeah. who won't sort of go up against them, but they certainly have avoided those sort of street feuds yes. which result in murders and their areas being swamped by Gardaí. Exactly. So, but you know, it's it's Mr. Flashy, like it's, it's you know, whatever happens in terms of criminal investigations or anything else, you know, it, 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 it's... It, it, 
What were you eight. doing at 30? What was I doing? I was uh, back in college yeah. s- studying journalism. Yeah. You know? I, yeah, it's a kind of an interesting age, 30. You sort of start to get a bit of sense after it, I think. You start to get a bit of sense. You, um, know? you start to get a bit of... Uh, but I suppose if you're stuck in that place where you have created for yourself, that you have created this incredibly volatile, paranoid world that you're living in, you're fighting with everyone at that stage, it's very difficult to well, untangle it, it. It is, you see, because this is the other thing. Um, you know, do criminals get to retire and... You know, if they've if they've developed bad blood in in like as Mister Flashy clearly has in Finglas, you know, if he says I'm I'm out of the business now, he possibly becomes more vulnerable mm. because it's the fact that he has access to guns and weapons and money keeps him a figure of fear. You know, mm-hmm. um, and you know, without you that, kind of have to stick with the horse you got on to an extent. You mm. know, but uh, yeah, look, the outcome is not good for the for that for that Gucci gang. If you look back on it, they they if you look back on social media, you can really see a kind of a path for them. Yeah, I mean, they had a great, they had a, a couple of years of really. They were around the world. They were in all the best places, the best clothes, the best cars. But really, that was all they got out of it. Mm. Okay, well, we'll see where we go with Flashy over the coming weeks. We will. Um, but that was exactly what we wanted to just do. Just give an idea who he is why he's uh, of interest to us and why we're not naming him. Exactly. All right. Thanks, Niall. Thanks, Nicola. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.